All right, for this tips and tricks, we're gonna be talking about gaining, collecting, adding, moving resources. So basically, according to the FAQ 1.25, collecting resources refers to both collecting resources during the resource phase and gaining resources through other card effects. An effect that prevents a hero from collecting resources prevents both methods of acquiring new resources. And that's important for this quest because in this quest, we're going to have characters that cannot collect resources. So that means when they can't collect resources, they do not collect any resources at the start of the round, and then there's nothing you can do to somehow get a resource into that character's resource pool. You can't move it with Aaron Rider. You can't move it into Biffer's pool. They basically are poor. They have no money. They can't gain money. And it's only until they are no longer unconscious, which is the keyword in this quest, that they could start getting resources. So no trickery, unconscious characters trapped in a sack made by a spider cannot get resources. All right, let's get on to the video. All right, let's go. Flies and spiders, the first quest in the second Hobbit box, Overhill and Underhill. Uh, side 1A says we're gonna find Bilbo's magic ring. We're gonna put it in our deck. We're gonna find the spider's glade and set it aside. And then we're gonna reveal one card per player. Side 1B into Mirkwood, nine quest points, and then characters who are unconscious cannot quest, attack, defend, collect resources, trigger abilities, be poisoned, or ready. So this quest introduces a couple new keywords, unconscious and venom. So I'll be talking about those in a moment. So as you can see, I'm not running a lot of dwarves for my heroes. That's because an ally swarm deck, which that's what the dwarf archetype is, it wants you to swarm a bunch of dwarves onto the table, it doesn't work well against this quest. Stage two of this quest really makes it so that a lot of allies in play are not helping you. All right, let's take a look at my hero lineup. First is Thalon, and he's going to be helping me kill this one hit point enemy that comes off the encounter deck. So he will be questing for one, and then hopefully uh, helping us kill some of these spiders. So a big part of my strategy is killing these spiders before they attack us because the spiders have the venom keyword. Dune here is making an appearance here. So he's eight threat and then he can attack into the staging area. So again, trying to kill these enemies before they can kill me, he attacks into the staging area with three and I'm hoping to get some weapons on him so he can help kill these spiders. So again, trying to kill these spiders before they attack me. My third hero is Glorfindel. He's five threat, so that's why he's in this deck. And he's gonna be questing for three and hopefully staying ready if I can get Light of Valinor on him. If I have to commit him to the quest by exhausting, then I have to raise my threat by one. So that goes against my strategy. So I really don't want to raise my threat very much. I wanna keep these spiders in the staging area and kill them. And then finally, we have a new version of Baggins Sphere, Bilbo Baggins, 1113. He cannot leave play. If he does, we lose the game. He can spend a Baggins resource to search your deck for a treasure card and add it to your hand. And he cannot gain resources from any card effects other than treasure cards. I'll be using my custom tracker, 22 ridiculously low threat, and then resources across the top. I have to remember to give Bilbo physical resource. All right, so let's get this game rocking and rolling. Give the deck one more shuffle. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a Light of Valinor. I'm looking for a weapon. Those are the two main cards I'm hoping to find in my opening hand. I want to say I did play Dwarfs against this quest, and I beat it, but Stage 2 was a real struggle. This is a more fun way to beat the quest. Let's see what I got. Faint. Okay, that's nice. Cancel an attack. Uh, Shadows of the Past, that's very nice if I get that one hit point enemy in the discard pile. Envoy of Pelagir, a nice cheap ally to get into play. Oh no. Oh, I got the ring. I didn't really want to see that. Elrond's Council, uh, Miravor. Nope, I didn't get either of the cards I was looking for. No Light of Valinor, no weapon. So that was not a very good opening hand. Plus I got the ring. And I can use Bilbo's resource to go find the ring. So I don't want that in my opening hand. I want to search it out of my deck. I want my six cards I draw in my opening hand to be anything else. So, yep, definitely going to take a mulligan on that one. Let's try this again. Come on, weapon. Come on, Light of Valinor. Okay, Miravor. That will help me in stage two because I'm going to need help with willpower and resource generation once I make characters no longer unconscious. Okay, doesn't really help me now, though. Foe Hammer. That'll help me if I get a weapon after an enemy 
is destroyed by a character with a weapon, you can exhaust that weapon and draw three cards. Got to have a weapon for that to work, though, so I'm getting some of my pieces. Gandalf, okay, that's okay. Bofur, he can uh, basically sneak in the questing phase for um, two willpower for one spirit resource. Another Gandalf. Shadows of the Past, also useful at the second stage. I drew nothing that really helps me right now. No weapons, no Light of Valinor. No, oh, good lord. Okay, this hand isn't good either. So, all right. We'll just see how it works. Okay, so now I need to reveal an encounter card. So you always reveal an encounter card when the quest tells you to, after you draw your opening hand. Okay, so the card I get is a two-threat spider, crazy cob. When revealed... This enemy attacks the character with the most poisons attached. So let's stop the video here and I'm going to explain the two new keywords, poison and venom. So venom, when an enemy with the venom keyword damages a character, that character's controller must give it one poison. This is done by taking the top card of his deck and attaching it face down to that character. Face down cards attached to characters are considered poison. Poison cards are condition attachments and characters with any number of poisoned Attached are considered poisoned. So here's what unconscious characters mean. In this scenario, when a character has a number of poison equal to the number of printed hit points, the character is immediately made unconscious. This is done by rotating the character 180 degrees. After the character is made unconscious, the attached poison cards are placed in the owner's discard pile. Unconscious characters cannot quest, attack, defend, collect resources, trigger abilities, be poisoned, or ready, except by effects that target unconscious characters. These characters have been incapacitated by the spiders. If any number of poison is removed from a character, or that character leaves play, those poison cards are placed in the owner's discard pile. Okay, so that's like the big mechanic of this quest. We're going to get attacked by spiders. The spiders are going to add poison cards to our characters, and then they can become unconscious, which then makes them basically useless until they are made conscious through effects within the game. All right, let's continue the video. Okay, so Crazy Cobb is attacking the character with the most poison. Since I have zero poison on the table, everybody has the most poison, and therefore I'm going to choose Thalon. And this says, if the defending character is destroyed, I have to raise my threat by three. So Thalon is going to take a damage from this attack, because it was three against two. So that means I take the top card of my deck, and he now has one poison card. And this is why it's important to make sure you always reveal the card if the encounter tells you to reveal a card at the start of the game after you draw your opening hand. That one card that I just put under Thalon, that could be Bilbo's ring. I don't know. So if it is Bilbo's ring, I'm kind of screwed. Okay, so I draw Quick Strike. Quick Strike lets you declare an attack against an eligible enemy. Since Dunhir is allowed to attack enemies in the staging area, enemies in the staging area are eligible enemies for him, and it is not a combat action. Okay, my characters have the resources. Let's spend a Baggins resource to search my deck for a treasure card. I'm looking for the ring. Where is it? Where's my ring? I need my precious ring. I need it. I need it. Where is my... Got it. Okay. Whew. Okay. I was I was a little nervous when I had this happen. I said, man, I mean, it would be good for the video, bad for my game. It's extremely helpful at stage two. I think you could win without it, but man, it would be tough. Let's look at what this ring does. It costs zero. Artifact item ring attached to Bilbo. Exhaust Bilbo's magic ring and raise your threat by one to gain one Baggins resource. Limit once per round. Response, after Bilbo Baggins, exhaust to defend an attack. Exhaust Bilbo's magic ring and raise your threat by three to cancel all damage from this attack. Pretty darn powerful. Okay, let's put Miravor on Thalon. We'll give him a uh, dose of Liquid Courage here. I can use it right now. So I am going to choose to ready Thalon, and then I'm going to put this right back on top of my deck. I need Miravor when I get to stage two, but it does help me right now. So he is now once again ready, so that worked out really well. I'm going to exhaust Bilbo, Glorfindel, and Thalon to the quest. I have to raise my threat by one because I don't have Light of Valinor. So I'm currently sending five against two, and I get another crazy cob. This is crazy cob. Okay, so Thalon does a damage to it, and now this enemy is going to make an immediate attack against me because that is the when revealed effect. So what happens is, is you deal a shadow card to the enemy, and then that action window opens up right there. 
And so that allows me to play a card that has action, like Quick Strike, which is not a combat action. So I can exhaust a character and declare that character as an attacker against an eligible enemy. Dune here can attack enemies in the staging area. He can attack for three and kill that crazy cob before he attacks. So Thalon did the one damage, and then Dune here's three attack is enough to kill that spider. Which is pretty cool, because then I don't have to quest against it. So even though I didn't draw my weapons or my Light of Valinor, I did draw a bunch of my other cards that helped me in other ways. So uh, not too bad for a first turn in revealing two enemies that make immediate attack. All right, what do I get now? Oh, Miravor. Surprise, surprise. All right, so let's play some cards. I really don't have a lot of the cards I wish I had at the beginning of the game here. Um, but I will play Gandalf and see what he can draw me. So I'm going to spend all my resources, including the Baggins resource, and I'm going to draw three cards. I'm really looking for weapons and Light of Valinor. There we go, I got Light of Valinor. I got Goblin Cleaver, which requires a weapon to have any effect, and then I got another copy of Gandalf. So I will commit Gandalf to the quest for four, Thalin for one, and Bilbo for one more. I'm not sending Glorfindel since he would have to raise my threat. And this says the first player names a sphere, did then all non-Baggins characters who do not belong to the named sphere are removed from the quest. Well, Gandalf doesn't have a sphere, so he's removed from the quest. So I guess I'll just say tactics and I'll send two. So it's two against two, I make no progress. And then uh, Dune here can attack up into staging area and do one damage out of the two needed. And we'll go into the next round. Okay, Elrond's Council, that's great. That'll let me drop my threat by three and uh, give me a willpower. So I will play this Light of Valinor on Glorfindel. So I got that combo running. Uh, the rest of my cards, it looks like Miravor is another good option to get into play. I'll put that on Thalin. I'm going to plan on using it later. And then now I'm going to play this Elrond's Council. So let's drop my threat by three. I'll give an additional willpower to Glorfindel. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm sending six against two. And we reveal, hey, a dark bat. All right, one hit point. Fallon kills it. Gotta love that. So I make four progress, which is nice. And then in combat, I still don't need to engage the spider. So I can exhaust Dune here and he will kill the spider. And I have now emptied the staging area. So things are looking a lot better than when this game first started. And I draw another copy of Light of Valinor. All right. Okay, looking at my hand, I'm still digging for cards and I have two copies of Gandalf still, so I might as well play one. I am not afraid to spend resources while you're in stage one. It's okay, because when you advance to stage two, you lose them all, so you might as well play them while you can. And I get an Envoy of Pelagir, another Goblin Cleaver, and then the West Road Traveler. West Road Traveler is gonna quest for two when I get her in play, and Envoy of Pelagir basically only costs one because you get to put a resource back into play on a noble or Gondor hero's resource pool. Okay, sending to the quest against nothing, and I get another spider. Uh, he is only one threat, and he's three hit points, one defense, so Thalon does the damage. And then I am going to make enough progress to advance to stage two. Okay, so Lost in the Dark, 2A, just nice flavor text, 2B, when revealed, Reveal stage three and create a separate staging area for the first player using that stage. Then all other players advance to stage four. So since I'm a solo game, I just will be at stage three. Stage three says remove all resources from each hero's resource pool. Then make each character you control except Bilbo Baggins unconscious. Okay, 11 quest points captured by spiders. Unconscious characters cannot quest, attack, defend, collect resources, trigger abilities, be poisoned, or ready, except by effects that target unconscious characters. Do not pass the first player token. When this stage is complete, do not advance to stage four until the end of the quest phase. And here's the big one, action. Spend two Baggins resources to ready an unconscious character you control. So Bilbo needs to free everybody. That's the big gimmick of this quest. Okay, so we get rid of all cards out of the staging area. So that spider goes bye-bye. And then we are at stage three. So I need to make 11 quest points. And then every character becomes unconscious. So that means you rotate them and they are now hanging upside down in a spider sack. So when a character becomes unconscious, you discard any poison cards. So let's see what this card was. 
Uh, okay, it was a West Road Traveler. Okay, so everybody except Bilbo is unconscious. So Bilbo is the only one who can do anything. Then I'm going to take an action. I'm going to exhaust the ring, or I'm going to put it on in this case, and then raise my threat by one and get a resource. At the end of the round, I raise my threat again. Gandalf leaves play, and only Bilbo is going to get a resource. Everybody else is unconscious, but I do get a weapon! Okay, better late than never. This is, uh, this is pretty good. So I needed a weapon. I do have two Baggins resources, so I will ready Thalon. And then I have this Miravor, and Miravor can give a character plus one willpower till the end of the round, which is pretty good. So I'm going to give him plus one willpower and a resource, because he did not collect a resource when he readied. That time had already passed in the resource phase. So he's going to spend his one resource, and we're going to put that Blade of Gondolin on Dune here. So Dune here doesn't have to be ready to grab a new attachment. Okay, so I'm going to send Bilbo and Thalon on the quest. I'm questing for three, and we get uh, take damage equal to the number of poison on each character. Okay, so I don't have any poison, so that surges. So let's surge into the next card, and we get uh, a three-threat spider. When revealed, each character committed to the quest gets one poison. Okay, uh, so I'm going to take a poison on Bilbo and Thalon. That's fine, but this is why I wanted that weapon. So this actually works out really, really well. Thalon's going to do the one damage to that spider. And that leaves two hit points left on the spider, which is really good. Okay, so I quested three against three. I make no progress. That's expected with this few characters. And then I can engage the spider. And then in an action window, I play Goblin Cleaver. In the combat phase and the spider actually dies so that works out really well i did make a slight mistake though i should have dealt the spider a shadow card that's when the first action window opens up sorry about that all right bilbo will put the ring back on i'm going to gain a resource we're going to the next round and then <laughs> i make another very small mistake but while i'm getting my threat dial and gaining resources and everything i picked bilbo's resource up and then i put it right back down on the one so he should have had two resources, so that's my mistake. It just hurts me, actually, doing it that way, because I have one less resource to work with. So that's why I raise my threat here and get the second resource. I should have already had two. Anyway, uh, the net result is the same. I still can just ready one hero with two Baggins resources. And so, yep, Gorfindel's going to flip back over. He is now ready. He's not going to exhaust a quest. Um, he did not collect a resource because he readied after the resources would have been dealt out. But sending everybody on the quest, I have five, and I reveal a one hit point, I'm sorry, a one threat spider. Thalon does the damage, and I get to do the whole goblin cleaver thing again. It's really just something I hope I can pull off once, but I have two in hand, so it, it actually gets to get pulled off twice. So, same drill as before. I engage the spider. I'm going to exhaust a weapon to Goblin Cleaver and kill it. And once again, I should have dealt shadow cards. And we are going to go into the next round. And I draw uh, Elrond's Council. Okay, great. So Elrond's Council is going to let me drop my threat, gain a willpower. Bilbo is going to put on the ring, get his second resource. And there we go. I have now made all of my heroes conscious again. So I'm at a good board state. This is why you don't run a bunch of allies. They would all still be unconscious. But now I can put a bunch of allies in. So I will play this Elrond's Council, drop my threat by three, give Glorfindel that extra willpower, and we're going to try to power our way through this quest now and get out of here. Get out of Mirkwood. Get away from these spiders and bats. I don't really care about the bats. Let's see what we get. We get some bats! Ha <laughs> ha! All right. Fallon takes care of those suckers. All right, gotta love those one hit point bats. So I'm questing against nothing. So that means I am going to have nine out of 11 progress. I did not quest with Bilbo because in case I needed to exhaust him to handle an attack, he could have raised my threat. And I draw shadows of the past. Oh, that's so great. I already had one in hand. I was gonna put the bats on top of the deck with that one, but I drew another one. So yeah. I'm going to spend some resources and put the bats back on top of the deck with shadows of the past. And then let's get some allies in play. So here comes Arwen. When she exhausts, she gives somebody plus one defense. Uh, but mainly she's two willpower. That's why she's in this deck. So looking at how much progress I need to make, and I know I'm questing against nothing, I'll just send Thalon 
and Glorfindel, and we take out the bats again. So De Fallon is just having a great time handling these bats. All right, what's on 4A? 4A, we're going to add the Spider's Glade to the staging area, and then 4B, three quest points, spend two Baggins resources to ready unconscious characters, and we can't place progress here while the Spider's Glade is in play. So if we defeat the stage, we're going to win, and we're also going to get Bilbo's Magic Ring for future scenarios. The Spider's Glade, it's immune. Uh, we have to exhaust Bilbo to travel there. That's why I kept him ready. And then at the beginning of the quest phase, we're going to add a spider. You're going to add more spiders in a three- or four-player game. Okay, no problem. So it's nine quest points we got to muscle through, and then three on the main quests, and we will have won the scenario. So Bilbo, he exhausts. We travel to the Glade. I have nothing happening in combat. So we're just going to go right to the next phase. But I am going to put on the ring right before we advance. I want to get a couple more resources. I have some cards I want to play that Bilbo can help pay for. All right, going into what I think is going to be the final round. I draw Miravore. That's great. That is very helpful because it's just going to give me one more willpower. So Bilbo, he is going to pay for this Envoy of Pelagir. That gave Glorfindel a resource. I'm going to spend two resources to put in the West Road Traveler. That's two more willpower. I'm going to put Miravor on Glorfindel, and then I'm going to immediately use it to give Glorfindel one more willpower and a resource. So that basically just netted me a, a willpower. I'm going to put on the ring to get another resource. And now we're going to go into the quest phase. So I'm looking for a spider. That's the one I want right there. He's three threat, and he has a when revealed, but you don't trigger the when revealed. So I'm going to add that spider to the staging area. He's 33 engagement, so I know I'm not going to have to engage him. That's why I wanted that one. All right, Bilbo's going to spend his resource, and Thalon is going to spend a resource. And we are going to put, <laughs> with Shadows of the Past, the bats back on top of the deck. I this, this is just so much fun. I'm just loving playing this. Okay, while I'm in the quest phase, I'm also going to throw Bofur in. So he comes in exhausted, committed to the quest, so he's adding two more willpower. I'm sending everybody on this quest except for Dune here. So remember, Glorfindel is boosted by one. The bats come into play. The bats leave play. Not really a challenge at all for... A battle axe wielding dwarf. All right, when it's all said and done, I make enough progress to clear the spider's glade and add one progress to the quest out of three. And then I don't have to engage anybody. Dune here can kill this guy. The blade of Gondolin triggers, and I've placed a second progress out of three. So I'm one away. I was just one progress away from beating this stage. So I will play Foehammer because I did kill an enemy and I didn't have to exhaust the blade of gondolin to put that progress foe hammer draws me uh, two more allies and another weapon it's all over but the singing folks I think you can see that this is a done deal so I'm gonna go into the next round everybody's got some resources I'm gonna spend everything to pop Gandalf into play why not Gandalf's gonna drop my threat down by five I'm going to send everybody on the quest. Lots of willpower against nothing, and I need to make one progress. I think there's one more bat in the deck, so I wonder if Thalon can take out this last bat. That would just be an absolutely epic way to end this thing. And we get... <laughs> nope, the exact opposite. Caught in a web, so I'll, uh, I think they got their uh, revenge on Thalon. So he's going he's gonna to get caught in a web. He's going to be made unconscious, so... That's all right. So that is a victory. We have taken out the spiders and the bats, and we are advancing now to the Lonely Mountain, and we have Bilbo's Magic Ring. I hope you enjoyed that one, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.